Hello, fellow comic book lovers, collectors, and aficionados. Vin Crew here with his, uh, well, is his bitch. It's uh, been a little while, so it can't be a weekly bitch, but it's a uh, back issue comic haul. So it's been a little while, but ah, what the heck? Life gets in the way, crap happens, blah, 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 blah. So let's get going here. Um, what I want to do, I haven't died, I haven't stopped collecting books by any means. I probably picked up eh, three long boxes maybe in the last. What has it been, seven weeks, eight weeks? I don't know, somewhere around there. But anyways, I'll eventually get to that. But I wanted to start with this one. This has probably been my find of the summer and maybe in quite some time. So very, very happy about this find. And I'm going to uh, this buy. I'll get to it in just a second. But my background is, I know I'm a little late to the party, but big fan of Wes Craven. Rest in peace, sir. Um, these are the original Nightmare on Elm Street books. This is the uh, Marvel Magazine, which came out in 89, had two issues, beautiful painted covers on both of these. And this is the innovation number one for Nightmares on Elm Street. So beautiful, beautiful books. I did pick these up recently. I'll have to circle back on that and explain when I bought them and how much. But those are my background. Big fan. Love you, Wes. Mess you. Rest in peace. All right. So. What the find was is uh, we went to, on a vacation. Um, we went about, oh, I don't know, two and a half hours north. And uh, they each gave us, you know, each of us had a little chunk of time that we could do what we wanted. And, of course, I chose to go to a comic book shop. So they dropped me off. And the one I chose to go to, they had a uh, uh, Craigslist ad running saying, Marvel graphic novels, Marvel graphic novels. So I was hoping that they were the original Marvel graphic novels from the 80 and 90. 80s and 90s but when i got up there they pointed me to a table and it was all the current stuff which i got i have zero interest in that stuff so passed on that but started digging through their back issues and um and what it was is i i started i came up with a by the time i got done digging i double fisted my stack it was huge of stuff i had pulled out and i went up to the counter and, uh, and I noticed a book on the wall, which I'll circle back at the end on. But that's what prompted my conversation with the gentleman at the counter. I said, hey, are your prices negotiable? And he says, yes. And I, and I said, well, what's the best on you can do on this? And he says, well, basically what the owner likes is, is that you shoot us the offer. And if we think it's acceptable, we'll take it. If not, we'll counter you. I said, cool. All right. So first chunk of books I went uh uh, that uh, that I want to touch on is these right here. Spawn 207. And there's a reason why I'm showing these, and I'll circle back on it in just a second. 206, 205, 197, 195, 194, 192, 191, 190, 189, 188, and oops, and 174. All right, so the reason I'm showing these is let let me touch on Spawn for just a minute here. And this, I I had brought this exact conversation up to uh, my buddies Tom Ryan, Tom Ryan, Matt, Comic Quarter 410, and uh, Evan Leahy, and I had mentioned that. You know, I'm trying to collect the spawn run, and I'm trying to get from two one through two fifty, but the issues one sixty five through two ten, and that started roughly around two thousand seven. You go forty five issues, that would bring you right around two thousand ten. Okay, if you look at these issues, for the most part, every single issue. If you look at mycomicshop.com, if you look at uh, Atomic Avenue, if you look at eBay. With the exception of a couple issues and that sort of a thing, um, sorry, I'm trying to get this a little bit more in focus. Uh, you inevitably, and if you, I, I dare you to try to find them at your local, um, they will ask five to maybe, you know, at least five dollars for each issue, regardless. Um, in this issue right here, 175 Gunslinger Spawn, that's a $35 book. Now let's put that in perspective. If you take Amazing Spider Man, if you take Batman or Uncanny X-Men, those same 45 issues during that same time frame of 2007 to 2010, 
I promise you, they do not all sell for $5 each. They don't, okay? But Spawn from 165 to 210 I know they're a low print run, but what drives me crazy is nobody talks about how hard they are to find. But people who collect Spawn, they all know how hard it is to find. So, um, very interesting. So, wanted to touch on that. So, they wanted, and, and I mentioned to my friends, I go, you know, if I can find from 165 to 210 any of them from like two, three dollars lower, I'll buy them all day long, doubles no matter what. But my problem is, is I don't have any of them until now. So thankfully, I found them. They wanted three dollars a pop for these. So twelve issues, uh, brought them up. That would have been thirty-six bucks. I said, could you do twenty-five dollars for or twenty? Excuse me, twenty dollars for this group of books. And he looked at them. He goes, how about twenty-five? Go okay. How about you throw in these two books on top of that for the twenty-five? Titans 31, love the Destro cover, and this X-Women, uh, the Minara uh, cover. And he says, okay, done deal. So I got those for uh, $25. These two are doubles, so if you're interested, hit me up. All right, so moving along. <clears throat> then the next group of books, got to find a place to put these. Next stack of books, they came to about $52, I think it was. And I was able to find one graphic novel. Well, this is number two. This is Elric, Michael Moorcox, Elric. Um, and then I was able to find 15 Catwomans. I think this is volume two, I think. Um, this is the one with the No Man's Land and all of that. Um, none of the Harley Quinn ones, but yeah, I already own all the Harley Quinn, so found 15 of these, including the last three issues, not a big deal, but, so that's 15, 16 books, Old Man Logan, number 70, second print, uh, Star Wars 81, beautiful painted cover, get these out of the way, <clears throat> uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 6 out of the original series, um also found Captain Marvel 15 out of the original series. I thought I had owned or I, I thought I owned all of the Captain Marvel series one when I completed my Thanos run. But when I went back and checked, I was missing this one. So now I've got it. This one's super happy to find. Epic Illustrated number three, first Dread Star. Didn't have that, so now I do. This is like a $30 book somewhere around there. So um Happy about that. Inhumans from the Marvel Knights, number one. This is the Dynamic Forces um, uh, version uh, variant. That's probably a $20 book, give or take. And then this book right here. Oh, my God. This book. Oh, <laughs> this is the book I am so, so, so happy to have. This is this book right here. And you're put Uncanny X Men 297. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck, Mike, 297? That's not a that's not a hard book to find. Um, well, actually, this book is exceedingly rare and very, very hard to find. And what makes this a hard book to find is this is the Pressman variant. And you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck is a Pressman variant? Well, Pressman, what they do is they, they are a board game maker, you know, I don't know, like Monopoly and... Um, that sort of a thing, but they um, they made an Uncanny X Men board game, and um, what they did is this in this board game they included for sure a coupon, but sometimes they actually included the book itself instead of the coupon. But with this coupon, you would be able to mail it in, and you would be able to get one of four Uncanny X Men's that were reprinted by Pressman. And with these four coupons, they were good for one of four um, X-Men books. And what they included is it would be this one, which is 297, 303, which this is the Pressman variant, and 307, which you can tell these pretty easily because they're the gold background. Then lastly was Uncanny, or not Uncanny, but X-Men, the second series, number 11, and that's a silver background. I don't own that one. That's the last one I'm missing. But this one by far is the rarest of all of them. And the reason that these are the rarest is that these were not, there was never an issue in any of the board games. And 
uh, they, the coupons were the lowest amount given for this particular issue. They believe maybe it was because that was the print run of the game was towards the end of that. And recalledcomics.com, which is an uh, awesome site, I love Recall Comics, they estimate there's about maybe 500 of these in existence. And if you look at it, uh, if you look on eBay, sold copies, they probably sell for about $75 to $100. There's three of them right now on eBay. Uh, one is $285, I believe. One is $295. Those are rare, uh, raw, excuse me. And then there's one graded one for $599. So super, super hard to find. And you may ask me, well, how do you tell the difference on this particular one? If the other ones are gold and silver, this one looks the same. You're right, except for one thing. Songs end right here. See how it's written in red? Uh, the regular issue, it's yellow, all right? So you want to look for the one that's red. And the other way to tell for sure, here we go, Joe, comic fan, is all of them have the same back, which is an advertisement for the Uncanny X-Men Pressman game. And there is the, the, the board game I was referring to, all right? So super happy about that, all right? And that came to, they were asking... 52, 50, somewhere around there. And I offered them 35 and they took it. Now, the big daddy, the one that took up most of my money, I mean, like I said, when I came up there initially, I had a huge sack of books and I had to put some of them away. I just couldn't afford it anymore. All right. So uh, this one, when I came up, I was looking at their uh, wall books and this one caught my attention. And I, I couldn't believe I saw it there. I just couldn't believe it. And, uh, and they had a price tag of $90 on it. And I said, well, can I look at the book? And they said, sure. They brought it out. And, uh, and at $90, this would have been a steal. This would have been good, less than a tenth of what they are selling for on eBay. But I, that's where I asked him. I said, is your price negotiable? And he says, yeah. So what would be the best you could do on this particular book? And that's where he responded, well, well the owner... I should make the first offer. If it works, we'll accept it. If it doesn't, you know, and uh, I go, okay. You know, I go, I don't want to insult you, but would you take 60 for this book? And he took the book and he went over to the, his computer uh, at the checkout thing. I'm like, oh my God, he's looking at eBay. I won't even get this book at $90 now um, once he sees what this is selling for. And uh, he's looking and he's looking. I don't know exactly what he's looking for because I'm going through the books too to whittle down and find out what else I can do. And, um, and he goes, okay, I'll take the 60. I'm like, damn, game on, boy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. This is the book I got for $60. Wonder Woman 98. All right. And you may be saying, if you're not up on Wonder Woman, if you're not up on what's going on with this particular book, this came out in 1958. All right. In 1958, Wonder Woman was by far a not a big selling book. <laughs> uh, in uh, so the, the print run on this thing is unbelievably low. They throw out the words rare on this book quite often. They call it a ghost. And who am, who is they? Major retailers such as uh, Met Metropolis, um, Mile High, places like that call this a ghost. They, come, they say that they see more copies of All-Star Comics 8 than they do of this book. Now, who's they that they're quoting? Who, who is the person that's quoting Mile High and the other ones? It's CBSI. If you look at CBSI's website, they have this in their top 10. Hardest books to find right now. Hottest books uh, on, the, on the planet. Um there were two completed sales on eBay. One that had about this much of the cover missing. So almost half the cover was missing. That sold for $405. Another one that they paired up with uh, Wonder Woman 96, which trust me, 96 was not the book they were bidding on. But that was horrible. The the um, the spine was all tattered up. Um just messed up book and that sold for nine hundred and twenty five dollars this book here if you look at this book the spine is really tight i hope you can see that the staples are not rusted there's a little thing going on in that corner right there um that corner is pretty good i mean 
remember, this is 1958 <laughs> that this book came out. And the worst problem is right here, there's a little bit of a water stain kind of a thing. Maybe somebody dropped a, spilt a little coffee or something like that on it. And then um, I think they call this shadow foxing or boxing or whatever that were, where if you lay a, a book like right here and this part here is exposed for any length of time, it discolors compared to the other rest of the book. And you can tell there's a little bit of discoloration there. But, I mean, this book is tight, bright. Um, like I said, the, the, the staples are not rusted whatsoever. And what makes this book so sought after is, this is the what makes it such a key book, is this is the first Wonder Woman Earth 1. Um, it's the first Steve Trevor Earth 1. And it's the first um, uh, Queen Hippolyta. Uh, I can never pronounce that. Wonder Woman's mother. Um, and it's also the first time that Wonder Woman glides on air. A lot, a lot, a lot of key things. I mean, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, you know about this book. You know how exceedingly hard it is, rare. This is the unicorn of Wonder Woman books. Um, so super, super stoked to get that for $60. I mean, when you... So I spent... A, I got bags and boards on top of that. My out the door with the bags and the boards. All the books I bought, including this, the Wonder Woman, the X Men, Pressmen, the Inhumans, the Epic, the Gunslinger Spawn. That all came to hundred and forty dollars out the door. I mean, that's not even a tenth of what these books are worth. Not even a tenth. So. Super, super happy about that. So thank you so much with that. Hopefully I can get some more videos out. We'll see. No promises. But if I do, I've got some killer, killer, killer stuff to show you. So this is Vin Cruz saying thank you so much for watching. Signing off.